Neither chamber in Congress has passed a joint resolution for the State of the Union. How does the president plan to get around that if that doesn't happen? Well, the president accepted Speaker Pelosi's invitation but to. No, there's no joint resolution. Well, why didn't means... she do that? Why did she issue an invitation? Why did she lie about security concerns? Why aren't you covering that? Do you think she lied about security concerns? Are you willing to use the red lie that you love to let fly so often when it suits your your points of view? I mean, honestly, she the Secret Service and DHS affirmed to the president even before he asked that there are no security concerns. And they have since confirmed that publicly to all of you. But you just let that go, that she lied about the security concerns. I thought his letter was incredibly gracious to not mention that and to say to her, Thanks. I accepted your invitation. I plan on coming. He also is just, what he's doing is he wants everybody to have certainty about Tuesday night that he intends to go to the chamber in, in Congress and deliver his State of the Union to the entire nation. He hopes that the Speaker and, and the caucus will be there. The First Lady is inviting her guests, as every First Lady does. And I certainly hope that the speaker will not deny seats to our guests also. Uh, the speaker made as far as it relates to security but if there is not a joint resolution passed is it the belief of the white house that the president can still go down there and give this you you read the president's letter for what it is and he of course is responding to her fake complaint that um, there were security concerns uh, as far as we could tell from news accounts that came from one furloughed worker who called a different member of congress as far as i can piece together but i'm going to go with dhs and the secret service on this one and what they've told the president of the united states without a current resolution the president does not permission to enter the white house had talked about so why not do that instead why would he hold it why would the president hold a rally when he can this is the state of the union it's not why hold a rally when he can go and address the entire country? I mean, I guess the big question is, what are you afraid of him saying? Are you afraid of him quoting Democrats who have talked about how walls and barriers work? Or are we afraid of talking about the number of illegal aliens who were stopped or drugs from coming in in places like Yuma and Tucson and San Diego? and Tempe where walls have been have been erected successfully? Are they afraid of talking about the tax cut having led to 8 million Americans having raises or bonuses or both and the repatriation of trillions of dollars of wealth? I mean, what was everybody so afraid of the president saying at the State of the Union that you would deny the country the ability to hear its president? I think Nancy Pelosi is worried that some of her chamber won't show up. And that's not an embarrassment to the president, it's an embarrassment to her. They should be there. If they don't want to applaud, they don't want to stand, they don't want to smile, they want to wear a certain color, yay. But show the dignity and serve the people who elected you in your state, in your district, and show up. Um, are we going to deny seats to the First Lady's guests? I certainly hope not. Kellyanne, Kellyanne, what, Kellyanne, what gives the president the idea that he can enter Congress without permission? Do you have the poll, do you have the poll question? No, but I just want to see the question. The question was, is the wall and so why would that be the question? Why is that a good question? Now I'm asking you why you're still saying wall when the president has said, I'm asking why you in the polling questions respectfully are still saying wall when the president said you can call it whatever you want, call it steel slap barriers, call it. Well, I was in the situation room when he said to, when he said to leader Schumer, minority leader Schumer, that you can, that it's a, he has, that's a great slogan, build a wall and crime will fall. Well, we know that's true. Again, are we afraid of that? Right. He calls it wall, steel slap barrier physical barrier, anything. In other words, we need a physical barrier that you can't crawl under, climb over, drive through, or walk around. That's why I have doors in my house, I assume you do also, and they actually have locks in them. I, I, in other words, it's, it's to protect the people on the inside. And so I don't understand why it's so difficult to get beyond what you all want to make, well, most of you want to make a four-letter word wall. When the president said to Chuck Schumer, very specifically, and the president has said many times since publicly, call it what you want to call it, but let's secure our border. Uh, what did they call it in the past when, when the Democrats have voted to renovate the existing wall or to build, I mean, are they willing to take, I mean, take down? The justify, how does the president justify holding out for a border wall? So here's what the president proposed, whether you want to cover it or not, whether you'd rather pick on a bunch of 15-year-olds or lie about you know, the BuzzFeed report, I don't know. But here's what the president actually proposed on Saturday, and that's not directed at you, that's directed to lots of people. Here's what the president proposed. He's got everything that the Democrats had asked for that, that I can tell. More money for detention beds, 
$800 million for humanitarian needs to be met, $805 million for technology. See, I've memorized it. You can too. You're smart people. $805 million for technology enhancements at the border to detect these drugs that are pouring through. 300 people in this country die from heroin alone each week, and 90% of it comes through the southern border. You can't you can't argue with that. What, what is the argument? It's 88%, not 90%. It's 292 people, not 300. I mean, folks, let's get serious. It's a lot of drugs coming into I work on this issue every day here. And by the way, every single Democrat in the House and the Senate that voted, voted in favor of the drug legislation that passed last year. So they've already admitted that we have a drug problem that deserves their vote and additional funding. They've already admitted that. But now when it comes to the southern border, the drug problem is no longer real. That's just folly. That's just, that's petty. And to your point, and I'll say what else is in it. Abby, the other things that are in it include 75 immigration judges, about 2,900 and so 2,750, I think, more agents for at the at the border. It includes a DACA. It includes TPS. All these things the Democrats said that they care about, the president has offered, and we hear crickets in return. Nothing. No counteroffer. No meeting. And I think that's why some of the rank and file Democrats are making joyful noises about border security. I think um, Mr. Hoyer, Mr. Clyburn, at least are talking about, I think Mr. Clyburn said something like, um, I believe he's a chairman, so I'll say Chairman Clyburn said um, smart wall. Leader Hoyer has talked about, yes, maybe a wall or a barrier. I mean, they know that this is the way to to protect our southern border, but also to get the government reopened. Well, I just sent her a letter. He first had to respond to the phony claim about security and to let him and everybody else know that he intends to deliver the State of the Union to the nation on Tuesday night, as presidents have done customarily in modern times, um, as he said in his final line, uh, on time, on schedule, and, and most importantly, on location. Well, we hope that there'll be 60 votes, or should be, because I, I would imagine that there should be at least eight Democrats who say, I think securing the southern border and stopping the drugs from coming through and, and people from pouring through and these poor kids who are making this perilous trek, I would think there's at least eight Democrats in the United States Senate, including people in border states like freshman Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema or Doug Jones, uh, a state that the president won handily, or Joe Manchin, a state the president won by, what, 42 points or so? I mean, these are people who want border security. They represent folks who want border security. And I think you have to listen to your constituents in fairness. So we, first and foremost, hope there'll be at least eight Democrats, if the Republicans stick together, looks like they are right now, get eight Democrats or so to come forward. If not, there's always a plan B. But again, if I may respectfully, the president put out a very robust proposal, released it publicly for everyone to hear. You covered it, thank you, a little bit anyway, and you can cover it more by saying this is what's on the table, and then ask the Democrats point by point to what do you object, the $800 million more for humanitarian needs, because a no vote on Thursday is a no to the $800 million for humanitarian needs. It's $805 million. It's a no to the $805 million for more technology and detection. It's no to 2,750 more Border Patrol agents. They're stretched. It's no to 75 more immigration judges and all the staff that goes with that. It's no to DACA and TPS. So they're saying no to things that they've said yes to in the past, and that's just disingenuous. I hope they'll change their minds. Is the Senate chamber still a possibility? Are you ruling out the Senate chamber when the president says on location, does he mean the well of the house? Well, he just, he, he presumes that he will be able to do what he's done the last two years, what President Obama did for eight, what President Bush did for eight, what President Clinton did for eight, which is go to, go to the Capitol, go to the House chamber and deliver the State of the Union standing in front of his vice president, who I'm fairly confident will be there, I'm sure will be there, and the Speaker of the House, who I hope will be there. And, and so what's, you know, what, what is, again, what, do people object to? You want transparency? You want accountability? You want the President of the United States well, to address the nation? Uh, you got to read the President's letter. He's saying, I'll see you in the chamber. Well, you weren't excited about that. Do you think the Speaker should have wasted everybody's time and lied about security concerns? Have you called her a liar? No, no, answer my question. What do you mean regardless? Oh, whoa, 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 Regard excuse me, because you have a partisan political hack agenda and you prove it every day. No, you don't. You don't have a constitutional agenda. 
You don't like using the word lie about security when it doesn't fit. Right. 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 Okay. I'm sorry. How close is the president on a deal with China? Trade deal with China. Well, you see what's happening in the Chinese economy, and the president, uh, he has meetings routinely with his trade team about China. Um, also, the president is taking the Chinese president at his word to get fentanyl scheduled as a controlled substance and treat it with the most severe punishment possible because that fentanyl that's being manufactured as an illicit opioid in China is coming right to our communities. It's coming through the southern border, through our mails, and through other means, and it's coming right in through Canada, more and more we see. But it is being manufactured in China, and it's poisoning our folks. I think about a growing number last year. If you look at the CDC report, it's almost a vertical, vertical line upward in the number of uh, fentanyl-related deaths. So that's part of it. In terms of trade, the president's made very clear. And tariffs that he, he – why do we have a trade deficit with China? Why um, – they, they've agreed to start importing more American goods, and so that's positive if that's true. But at the same time, the president could not be more clear about his entire trade agenda, whether it's uh, with South Korea, China, with Mexico, with Canada, with others, America first. And that means American workers, American industry, all these American industries that we were told flat on their back, you're going to wave your magic wand. He, you probably enjoyed that one with your favorite president. He, uh, he, somehow this president found a magic wand and was able to create all these new jobs and all these new manufacturing jobs. And people that I knew that I grew up with in South Jersey, where lots of folks work in industries like that, they're very happy. Well, it depends what's in it. Where has it been? What's taking so long? They've been in the majority now for weeks, and they're just putting this together. They have time to do almost everything. They have time to talk about the 2016 elections and the 2020 elections, and no time to come up with a border security package. So my polite advice to them would be, hurry up. We'll take a look at it. But you're betraying your own past votes and your own constituents if your border security package does not include a physical barrier. So I haven't seen what's in it. I haven't seen what's in it. But so far, what's in this package is an awful lot of what was on the Democratic wish list, and they know it. What's your message to the Covington High School students? Well, stay strong, and I'm glad that, look, I, I'm glad that there are people taking back their rush to judgment and their very cruel, incendiary, and in some cases, I'd say criminal things that they said and were trying to incite on social media. The, the idea that people are so miserable in this country that some of them have to immediately think the worst and uh, pick on people and try to ruin their lives in an instant is very concerning to me. It's concerning to me just as an individual, certainly concerning to me as a mother of four school-aged children because I'm trying to teach them to look at people and think positively if you can come up with something positive because you always can. We're all God's children. And yet it's constantly negative, negative. I, I frankly think it was a very bad weekend for many people, not everybody, but many people in the media starting Friday with the BuzzFeed report and ending, you know, over the weekend with what ended up being um, full video footage and I think a different story. But my message to them is to go back and, and be teenagers and high school students and be true to yourself. And we all know that they were being picked on um, because of their hats and we know that they're being picked on on social media because of their hats and frankly because they respect the dignity of life. Um, and my message to them would be since you are pro-life and you had the medal and the conviction to come here for the March for Life, to take a look at the horrific legislation that just became law in the state of New York where basically a physician doesn't need to perform an abortion in the 24th week, as I see it, and um, it's called women's health. What, 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 what the hell is women's health, having an abortion at almost six months pregnant? Um, and so we really have to, I think, do a little bit of soul searching as a nation to, to be applauding that um, as, as the way a civilized society would behave toward the unborn. So I would tell those, those young people, go back to your quiet lives, forgive those who wronged you, even though they hardly ever forgive um, anyone else's wrongs and and take a look at what's going on in some of these state legislatures like New York where people are proudly crowing about a law where I mean you, we, we've got listen the New York Times wrote two front page stories in the last several years talking about how with proper proper medical intervention a baby born at 23 24 25 weeks 
survives, can survive. And now we're proud that we're aborting them. I think that's really disgusting. I wish you would shine more of a light onto it because that is not where American public opinion is. And I think that's why the most pro-life president in history will continue um, to fight for the dignity of unborn life. Thank you.